He had a high leg kick, an over-the-top arm slot, a late release point, and one of the most unorthodox pitching motions in baseball. Tim Lincecum's unconventional methods and smaller stature led many scouts to question whether he could be equally as effective at the MLB level. But as it turns out, his uncanny delivery and deception would be his greatest weapon. His long hair and three seasons of utter dominance would make him a household name. So just how did this quirky, eccentric pitcher set the MLB on fire and how did his pitching mechanics ultimately lead to his demise? Timothy Leroy Lincecum was born on June 15, 1984, in Bellevue, Washington. As a youngster, Tim excelled in many different sports. He was quarterback in football, point guard in basketball, and even fired a 39 on 9 holes as a golfer, but most obvious was his talent as a baseball player. Tim's journey in baseball began in Little League, where he quickly stood out for his talent. By the age of 9, he was already pitching in local leagues, showcasing an arm that caught the attention of coaches and parents alike. After excelling in youth baseball, Tim attended Liberty High School, where he continued to refine his skills. In his senior year, Lincecum had a remarkable season, earning All-State honors and solidifying his reputation as one of the top high school pitchers in the nation. His strikeout numbers were off the charts, and he often dominated opposing hitters. Tim's high school dominance piqued the curiosity of MLB scouts, and he was high enough to be selected in the 48th round by the Chicago Cubs in the 2003 MLB Draft. While honored by this selection, Tim recognized his game needed refining, and he passed on the opportunity to enter the pros directly out of high school. Tim committed to the University of Washington, and during his freshman year, he quickly gained national attention, earning All-American honors and becoming the ace of the pitching staff. His velocity continued to rise, and his strikeout ability became legendary. Over the course of his college career, Tim was named Pac-10 Pitcher of the Year twice for the Huskies, and was actually drafted again when he re-entered in 2005, going in the 42nd round this time to the Cleveland Indians. Tim ultimately passed up on the second opportunity to join a big league organization. Instead, he continued to display his amazing talent in 2005 in the Cape Cod League for the Harwich Mariners, which he finished with a mind-boggling .69 ERA and struck out 68 batters in just 39 innings. In 2006, Tim's junior season was nothing short of spectacular. He won the prestigious Golden Spikes Award, given to the best amateur baseball player in the country, and his statistics were staggering, with over 200 strikeouts and another impressive ERA. This time around, Tim more than proved he was worthy of a high draft pick, even if there were still lingering question marks about his size and mechanics. Tim entered the draft for his third time, and after being selected by the San Francisco Giants as the 10th overall pick in the 2006 MLB Draft, Tim was ready to make his mark. But first, he needed to navigate the challenging waters of the minor leagues. Tim's minor league journey began in the California League with the San Jose Giants in 2006. He made a significant impression showcasing his electrifying stuff and earning a 1.7 ERA over 31.2 innings pitch for both San Jose and Salem Kaiser. In 2007, after a dominant start in AAA with Fresno, characterized by a .29 ERA over 31 innings, Tim got the call he'd been waiting for. The undersized, unconventional righty was headed to the bigs. His debut came against the Phillies, and despite the nerves, he struck out three batters in the first inning. The baseball world was officially introduced to the freak. Lincecum entered the league with three pitches, a four-seamer, a two-seamer with lateral movement but great depth to induce ground balls, and a curveball that broke away from righties. His stuff, while far from his peak, was big league ready, and in July of his rookie season, Tim went 4-0 with an insane 1.62 ERA. His talent and repertoire, headlined by his overhand 97 mile per hour fastball, was undeniable. Lincecum's rookie season was a bit of a roller coaster ride. While he struggled with consistency at times, his talent shone through. He ended the 2007 season with a 7-5 record and a 4.0 ERA, striking out 150 batters in 146 innings, and in the meantime added a changeup that looked like his fastball but fell off the table. As a 
a precaution, the Giants shut Tim down in September in an effort to limit his innings pitched as a young pitcher. In 2008, Tim's first full year with the big club, the freak exploded. He added a slider to his arsenal and showed everyone what he was truly made of. He won his first four decisions in April and big league hitters were mind blown by his stuff. Houston's Lance Berkman stated that Tim had almost three unhittable pitches and Arizona's Connor Jackson gave even higher praise of the young righty, stating that Tim was the best arm I've seen all year, no doubt. Tim Lincecum had officially arrived. On July 7th, Tim was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and in the same month, was slated to pitch in his first All-Star game, although he inevitably ended up missing his first appearance due to illness. In September, he pitched his first shutout against the Padres, throwing a mind-boggling 138 pitches in 9 innings, striking out 12, and showcasing just how much of a freak pitcher and phenom he actually was. As the 2008 season came to a close, Lincecum had finished with an impressive 18-5 record, a 2.62 ERA, 265 strikeouts, and in November was rewarded for his awesome first full season in the bigs, with the National League Cy Young. In year three, the freak got off to a tough start, losing his first decision of the season, but got hot shortly thereafter winning his next six starts in a row and not losing again until June 17th. On June 2nd, he became the quickest Giants to 500 strikeouts and closed an impressive June with a 4-1 record in the month. Tim stayed hot throughout his second full season in the bigs, even after missing a scheduled start for the first time of his career. He finished with another impressive ERA of 2.48, winning 15 games and striking out 261. The Freak won his second consecutive Cy Young in November, becoming the first pitcher in MLB history to win the award in his first full two seasons in the majors. In 2010, Tim stayed hot, starting the season 5-0 and for the third year in a row was an all-star. Although he was unable to sustain consistent success throughout year four of his career, when he had lost five straight starts in August, Lincecum bounced back, winning five games in September for a 5-1 record and helping the Giants to the playoffs. In his first outing of his postseason career, Lincecum was nearly flawless. He pitched a complete game shutout against the Braves in game one, allowing only two hits and the Giants inevitably advanced to the next round for a matchup with the Phillies. In Game 1, Tim got the better of his Cy Young counterpart Roy Holiday, helping the Giants get off to a hot start, grabbing the 1-0 lead in this series. In Game 5, the two faced off again, and while the Freak pitched well, his effort wasn't enough as the Giants dropped their game to the Cardinals 4-2. Then, in Game 6, with the Giants barely holding on to a one-run lead in the 8th, the unprecedented happened. Lincecum was called in to pitch on one day's rest, after throwing seven innings in the game five. He struck out Worth, but then gave up back-to-back -back singles before being pulled for the closer Brian Wilson. Wilson got the Giants out of the eighth unscathed, and the Giants' 3-2 lead held, sending them to the World Series. In game one of the World Series, Tim got the nod once again. He pitched six innings, giving up four runs, and while he botched a should-be easy rundown when he caught Michael Young, his effort was enough, and Tim grabbed the first World Series win of his career when the Giants closed out the game with an 11-7 victory. In Game 5, the Freak was called upon to shut the door, with the Giants leading the series 3-1 over the Rangers, and he did just that. Tim was marvelous in his closeout game striking out 10 in 8 innings, only giving up 3 hits and helping lift the Giants to the World Series title. In Year 5, Tim continued his dominance. He set a Giants record for the most 10 strikeout games in franchise history, with 29. Although Lincecum was impressive in Year 5 with a 2.74 ERA, his record didn't reflect it, which was mostly due to poor run support and Tim became the first pitcher since 2004 with over 200 Ks and less than 2.75 ERA to finish with a losing record. Lincecum, due to his tremendous pitching, was obviously the apple of the Giants' eye, and they rewarded him with a massive 5-year, $100 million contract, 
which he inevitably turned down. Tim later agreed on a shorter term, two-year deal where he would get paid $40.5 million for his efforts, leaving the door open for free agency down the road. Now, Tim began to decline after the contract, posting a higher ERA than fans and the Giants organization had grown accustomed to, finishing with a 3.83 ERA over his last 12 decisions, although his season-long ERA was still quite high at 5.18. The Giants, however, were back in the postseason, but this time the Freak would be used in relief instead of as a starter. In this role, Tim excelled in the NLDS against the Reds. While his two innings of shutout ball in Game 2 were a fruitless effort after the Giants lost 9-0, he earned a win in Game 4, throwing four and a third innings in relief, only allowing one run and helping the Giants force a Game 5. Tim would pitch twice in the NLCS, both as a reliever and a starter. In relief, he was awesome once again, pitching two hitless innings in Game 1. But after getting the nod as a starter in Game 4, the Freak struggled, giving up four runs in four and two-third innings, earning the loss and putting the Giants down 3-1 in the series. The Giants, miraculously, would come back in the series and punch their ticket to the World Series for their second time in three years, after a win in Game 7. In the World Series against the Tigers, Lincecum's role was limited, but in the one appearance he did, Tim was great, throwing two and a third scoreless innings in Game 3, helping the Giants earn the victory on their way to sweep the Tigers, and the second World Series title in the last three years. After that second World Series season, Tim's pitching definitely began to decline, and the level of dominance he had so consistently shown over his first few several seasons of his career simply wasn't there, although there were a few bright spots. On July 13th against the Padres, Tim threw the first no-hitter of his career, and the first ever at Petco Park. But the remainder of 2013 was not up to Tim's standards, as he again finished with a higher ERA of 4.37. Although Tim's performance was clearly on the decline, which many began to speculate was due to his unconventional mechanics, he re-signed with the Giants on a two-year $35 million contract. In 2014, he had another no-hitter going against the Cubs on May 28th but was removed after five innings due to a blister, and the no-hitter inevitably fell short in the seventh. On June 25th, however, a blister could not save the Padres, and Tim would not be deterred. He threw his second no-hitter against the club from San Diego, this time at AT&T Park, and for his second career no-hitter in as many seasons. After that no-hitter, however, things really fell off for Tim as a starter. He posted a 9.49 ERA from the end of July to early August, and was replaced in the Giants rotation. In the 2014 playoffs, Tim made the 25-man roster, but was the only one not used in the Divisional and Championship Series. In Game 2 of the World Series, however, Tim's name was called, and boy did he deliver. The free came in on the bottom of the 7th and retired all 5 batters he faced, before leaving with back tightness. It would be the last time Lincecum would pitch in the series, but the Giants were able to bring home their third World Series title in six years after closing out the Royals in seven games, and Tim added another ring to his collection. In 2015, Tim's career hit an all-time low. He was diagnosed with a degenerative hip condition that required surgery and finished the season with another ERA above four. In 2016, the Freak left Bay Area for the LA Angels, signing a one-year $2.5 million deal. He initially rehabbed with AAA Salt Lake City, but got called back up on June 18th. Tim, however, continued to struggle with the Angels, and looked like a shell of the player he used to be. He was optioned again to Salt Lake City, and was never recalled, finishing the season with a 9.16 ERA. After failing to find an MLB contract and sitting out the entirety of the 2017 season, the Freak signed a one-year contract with the Rangers, where he was intended to be used as a relief pitcher. He was placed on the 60-day DL due to a blister on his middle finger he suffered in training camp, and although he would inevitably see some time with the Round Rock Express of AAA, Tim would never pitch again in the majors. 
In 2019, Tim appeared at a ceremony to honor Giants manager Bruce Bochy's final game with the club, and he noted that while he had not formally retired from baseball, he was trying to transition. Tim also stated that he was struggling with finding out who he was after baseball, and for him, that had been the hardest part. Tim Lincecum was a lightning rod on the mound. He took the MLB by storm in his first few years in the bigs, winning two consecutive Cy Youngs in his first three seasons, helping the Giants to win three World Series titles, and throwing two no-hitters in the process. While Tim's greatest weapon may have been his deception, his unconventional pitching method that allowed for it was ultimately his downfall. His long stride allowed him to generate a tremendous amount of power from his hip muscles, which of course created a ton of velocity, but inevitably may have led to his demise. The incredible rise of The Freak may be just as memorable as his quick downturn, but Tim's dominant four seasons in the Bay and his role in three World Series runs will never be forgotten. Tim, the shorter statured, long-haired, unconventional righty, undoubtedly left his mark on baseball. His exciting, deceptive, and quirky style was remarkable, and more importantly, allowed him to assert himself as one of the most dominant pitchers of the generation at his peak, solidifying the Giants' faith in him and his place in baseball lore.